what is man or woman that God is mindful of them, cares for them, making them a little lower than the angels and crowning them with glory and honor. I knew a woman once who walked with God, who danced with God, who soared on the wings of the wind where only eagles dare to fly. Her name was Carla, and she was a woman after God's own heart. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Where's your dress? Yeah, and your basket. The Lord who chose a shepherd boy and made him king of Israel can use the very least of us to accomplish great things for him. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. A long time ago, I began serving the Lord at churches and in prison ministry. Wherever he wanted me, I'd go. I'd say, here am I, send me. Don't you know that kind of faith pleases God? And he'd always allow me to take part in what he was doing. A while back, a prophetic word was spoken over my life that I would minister to those behind prison bars. And one day I'd embrace a special set of hands, a woman's hands. And if I would trust in God and take those hands and walk with her through the circumstances and seeming contradictions, God would deliver her into my arms. Well, nothing happened for years. And I'd forgotten all about it until I met Texas Death Row inmate 777, Carla Faye Tucker. There are so many things I could say about her beauty and genuineness. Carla's perception of life shaped everyone's reality around her. You truly felt that nothing was impossible and that there was always a hope and a future. As Shakespeare said, all the world's a stage and all the men and women are merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. This stage was set and Carla's life played out like a majestic new rendition of the power of God to change a life. The global theater of death row politics and prison reform were the setting as, as Carla was destined to be the first woman executed in Texas in over 100 years. We've never seen such a fuss over a bunch of convicted killers. Yeah, well, there but for God's grace go the rest of us. You think? You know, after my first husband left me, I could have killed somebody. She's all yours, Chapman. Of course she is. Carla, here's that book you asked for. Oh. Oh, Carl, this is great. Experiencing God. This is just... It was a privilege to serve God on death row. It was always a good time with the chaplain and Carla. And then, in one moment, an instance, it turned from business as usual to a divine appointment with destiny. Hey, maybe next time we'll take a spin around the floor. All right, Carla? All righty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dana Brown. Hmm. Dear Carla, I appreciate you and the time we spent talking together about God the other day. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it, but I can't stop thinking about you. I came there to minister to you. <laughs> but you blessed me. I'm writing this at midnight. There's a full moon shining. Been thinking about how nature declares God's glory like it says in the book of Romans. Just look at the moon and sun. The moon reflects the light from the sun. Christians are supposed to be lights in the world. Some are like a new moon. They're there, but they don't reflect any light. Oh, let there be light. There are quarter moon Christians, half moon. And some just shine like the full moon. And then there's you, Miss Carla Fay. You're as bright as a Texas harvest moon in June. Appreciate you, Dana Brown. Carla? Carla? Yes? What is it? What's the matter? I need your help. Okay. It's my son, Joey. He's hanging around the wrong crowd, and I'm pretty sure they're doing drugs. Carla, God is so good. Yes, he is. His compassions never fail, and I trust him. But Joey's my baby. 
He's my gentle giant, and I don't want to lose him to that crowd. Oh, I understand. <laughs> Did you tell him what I said about drugs and the crowd I used to run with? I want him to get on my visitors list, right? I want to see him. And listen to me, it's not over till God says it's over. You hear me, chap? Yeah. You bring Joey here. Hey, Joey. Hey, look up, buddy. Come on, I want to talk to you. Your mom and dad love you. And Jesus loves you. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. He cares for you, Joey. You don't want to end up here in prison. Drugs are a dead end. It's not like that. <laughs> oh, Joey. The devil's a liar, Joey. He's got you thinking it's just marijuana. You want to know how I know that? Look at my arms. You see that? It's our track marks. Yeah. I was shooting heroin when I was 10 years old. I got my first high on pot at 8. I could roll me the best joints in Texas. Isn't that sick? This is serious, though. You hearing me? I want you to take the better way and the better path. Because I chose death. And you can choose life. Got it? Okay. Dear Dana, thank you for taking time out to write me. I got your first letter this week, and I say first because I'm believing for more. I get so many letters from around the world, but yours made my heart skip a beat. I appreciate that. It's good to know that there are truly godly men out in the world that love Jesus and aren't afraid to show it. I thank God for putting me on your heart. He is so faithful. God bless you, Dana Brown. Carla. Hey, Carla. Been preaching two months straight now. Prisoners from all over are so hungry for the truth. The church needs to wake up. There's a harvest ready for the reaping. I'm writing this while watching my boy and his dogs. I'd like to see him more. His mom has got him most of the time. Yeah, I'm divorced. But I reckon God's bigger than divorce. You know? Looks like we might get back to see you soon. I'm going to check the schedule with the prison officials. You're on my heart and prayers. I appreciate you. Dana Brown. <laughs> 